let, let me share let me that is the critical part is it, is it visible yes sir it's visible now okay A very good morning to all the participants. Uh, my name is Dr. Vignesh. I'm part of the National Digital Library of India. We are one of the co-organizers and technical support partners for this uh, 25th uh, Silver Jubilee Year PN Panikra National Reading and Digital Reading Month celebrations, along with Niti Aayog, Ministry of Education, and Central Board of Secondary Education. And over 120 partners have joined for the, this year's uh, PN Panikra National Reading Month celebrations. As you are aware, we have been organizing a series of uh, webinars and today is the 24th in the series of webinars uh, uh, on this uh, series and today's topic is on uh, uh, NDLI uh, for uh, digital resources for the differently abled. Uh, we have uh, Professor uh, uh, Partha Pradim Das who is uh, one of the finest human beings I have come across uh, in my life. Uh, he is also my boss so I am very proud to say that and uh, so, uh, Professor Das has been uh, one of the founding members of this uh, National Digital Library of India. So, he has traveled extensively across the country as well as outside of India to collate and nurture various partnerships for uh, bringing uh, National Digital Library to this stage. So, I remember like he traveled outside of India most uh, more than a month and uh, visited various uh, content partners and uh, various international digital libraries and forged collaborations. So, he uh, he uh, thinks his primary thinking on uh, the NDLA is uh, unmatchable. Uh, he is uh, like uh, a thinking hat. So he has a lot of ideas uh, to bring up uh, National Digital Library of uh, India to every Indian citizen. Uh, so I remember like uh, we met him uh, in Kerala uh, almost like five years back, first time. So that time he came down to Kerala only for uh, creating awareness about National Digital Library of India for public librarian. So that's his uh, very kindness. He wants to ensure that the resource reach every sections of the society. Uh, Professor Das is uh, uh, like has called, uh, he is holding a P-Tech, M-Tech and PhD from IIT Karakpur. Uh, he has worked in the industry as well as in the academia. Currently he is the professor of computer science at the uh, IIT Karakpur. And he is also uh, uh, helped and managed a lot of uh, entrepreneurship initiatives, the technology enabled learning uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, his research interest uh, include, uh, as I uh, one of the five, one of the things I liked about his research interest is he is analyzing uh, the Indian classical uh, dance from a technology perspective. And in fact, uh, he has last time showed uh, some uh, uh, work he has done on that uh, also. So he is also passionate about uh, human activity tracking, machine learning, technology enabled learning also. And he has received a number of awards. Uh, I think uh, he has received the first uh, UNESCO uh, Young Scientist Award back in 1989. So uh, with this uh, kind introduction, now I request Balakopalji to formally welcome Professor Das uh, to this session and also the participants. Over to Balakopal, sir. Sir, kindly unmute, sir. Uh, Balagopal, sir, your mic is mute. Kindly unmute yourself. Balagopal, sir, can you hear me? Kindly unmute yourself. Just press the space bar in front of you. Ah, yes, okay. yes, now it's fine. Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Vignesh. It's a pleasure and privilege for me to address a welcome. Uh, I welcome to make my welcome address to Professor PPP Das. Das is known as PPD, or PPC and PPD, the dual, the two giants of the uh, National Digital Library. In fact, uh, he is my guru. In fact, he only taught me about this National Digital Library, the potentials and the prospects of the National Digital Library. And now I am going here and there and uh, 
telling uh, one percent of his uh, lessons he has uh, given to me, the knowledge he has given to me. No, he is honestly, as he rightly said, one of the nicest man uh, we have come across the uh, uh, in um, uh, among the friends, the international level, the uh, state, national and international level. Uh, very nice, uh, with, um, uh, a lovely man, a lovely man with a uh, with a botting encyclopedia in digital technology. And not only really digital technology, now his passion, uh, his passion is developing that uh, digital library to uh, to uh, reach the unfinished, uh, to have a, a real uh, a real uh, reach to the poorest to the poor. So with his mission, with his missionary zeal and his uh, wisdom and his uh, technical knowledge, he will excel. And I, I am sure that uh, the government of India will uh, award him uh, Fatma Awards in the future because his dedication, dedication to the cause, his dedication to the cause, and his capacity to solve any issues that is coming across uh, in the moment, uh, in the, his journey, and that is laudable. And he is uh, my real friend in this technology, and he only brought this uh, digital library movement to Kerala. In fact, when he came as a doctor, he said five years back, uh, as per the own invitation, uh, he uh, uh, made an impact, a very, uh, uh, what you call, very uh, uh, um, impressive speech that uh, made us to follow his footsteps and made this uh, digital library movement as a real success. Now, uh, sir, for, uh, um, as last, day, last year also I have said, now the Prime Minister has given the green signal to go ahead um, with this, um, this establishment of uh, 2.60 lakhs uh, digital libraries in the country using the, uh, using the, our, um, what is MB lab fund, MB lab fund, and uh, MLA lab fund also, because MB lab fund is reviving again, again, uh, because it was uh, suspended for a short while. Now, uh, from this uh, October onwards, it is uh, it revived. And then the MLA fund also, because local uh, management, local fund resource is uh, deriving from MLAs also. So with MLAs, in, uh, MBs, MLAs, and the district administration, we will be establishing these uh, digital libraries in uh, 2.65 lakhs uh, villages. And by the time the internet connectivity will also be a reality, and the mechanics, the IT giant mechanics, um, says that by India, we will have Indian. 90% uh, of Indian villages have internet connectivity by 2022 20, 23. Uh, so, uh, this online education, if you if we want, if we want this online education to, and this digital library has to be established in, every, in, in all the villages. First, initial in, in villages, and later in uh, homes of every, every uh, citizen, a citizen who deserve to acquire knowledge. And Professor Das is the man behind this, behind this gigantic movement of the country. Professor Das, uh, I welcome you to this um, August meeting. Thank you, sir. Good uh, morning, participants. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. You are audible, sir. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Balagopalji. Uh, you have spoken much higher of me than what I'm, I actually am. Actually, the fact of the matter is uh, I learned a lot about uh, the reading initiatives at the grassroots level from you, uh, from the great uh, initiatives that PN Panikkar Foundation has been taking. And we are really happy and fortunate that uh, National Digital Library of India for last five years is being able to collaborate with uh, the foundation to further the cause of reading, the cause of education, the cause of knowledge availability at multiple levels. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Vignesh, for uh, introducing me. Uh, again, more colorful than what I actually am. Anyway, so let me get uh, started. I'm sure uh, the audience here 
uh, have uh, had quite a bit of introduction about uh, National Digital Library of India, because uh, many of my colleagues have uh, spoken on various aspects of this National Digital Library. I would today talk about uh, a portal, a vertical that uh, is yet to be launched. It will uh, probably get launched in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's almost ready. A portal which is specifically focused on uh, the issues uh, of uh, the persons with disability. So as you are obviously aware, that uh, India has a big population of such people, particularly a big chunk of them are, uh, are uh, disabled with uh, blindness or low vision. So there has been a lot of requests to NDLI to create a knowledge repository targeted towards uh, this uh, group of people or you know, these kind of requirements. So this is a portal which will go towards uh, that. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, roughly the agenda. I'll spend two, three minutes on, uh, you know, reminding you on NDLI. And then I'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, the aspects of disability in India and give a overview of the portal. And then in some depth, uh, I will walk you around the part of the portal that deals with uh, blindness and low vision, which is uh, which is the you know kind of a very large concern in India so far as disability is concerned. And what you see uh, here, uh, it's not uh, just a random coloring on this slide. Uh, this is actually the international disability flag. It was created in 2017 and accepted internationally as a flag uh, to use on issues relating to the disability so so national digital library of uh, uh, india is one library for all of india as uh, balagopalji has uh, rightly pointed out current it was um, created it was started in 2015 uh, and uh, by ministry of education who has been supporting it uh, all through this uh, time and it is being implemented by iit kharagpur the project of which Professor Parthavartim Chakravarti, many of you may have heard him already, and uh, myself are uh, the in principal investigators. As of now, we have about 7.3 crore contents uh, in the digital library here, of which about 5 crore contents are fully available in full text. They are open and free. The remaining contents, uh, some of them have some authentication requirements or some payment requirement. The library is uh, covering several languages, uh, 400 plus, and it integrates about 300, over 350 sources. So it is, I mean, just to uh, remind you of what it is, it is a 24 by 7 enabled umbrella digital library, which means it's a, it's a federated uh, library which works with several partners to get you the contents. It's a single hit a single window search browse, and it is inclusive in several ways in the covering all academic levels, uh, different uh, um, disciplines and so on, uh, different languages. India, as, you, as we all know, has uh, several languages, 22 official languages of which uh, currently we have been able to provide user interface for for 10 most used languages in India, in addition to English. Now, besides uh, this uh, overall collection, we have very specific uh, collections which are focused on uh, terms of different user groups. So we have collections specifically for uh, school kids uh, created during the COVID time for uh, different uh, board level examinations, uh, different disciplines of engineering, science, humanities, literature, law and management, and so on. So you can uh, either fully search through this library, get your content, and there are several, um, uh, several refinements and all that uh, 
are used in doing this. I'm sure Dr. Vignesh has talked about it uh, already to you. And uh, uh, in addition, these are collections which are focused for user groups and NDLI um, uh, disability portal will be one such collection which will relate to, which will deal with all kinds of issues therein. So um, uh, these are basics of uh, digital library and how it improves upon the traditional library. I'll skip on that. I'll emphasize on the fact that NDLI as a whole is uh, driven by the two basic motto of openness and inclusiveness. It's open to all. Anyone can access most of the contents free, even without login or registration. Sources are mostly open access, as I said, about 75% uh, of the sources are open access, fully full text accessible. And further, it actually uses open technology, open source software, open metadata. So we believe in openness, and that's the way to go to be able to scale up. And the other side is it is inclusive in every respect. Uh, it covers all subjects, all levels of education, all domains, and so on. And NDLI Disability Portal is an attempt towards uh, increasing or extending this inclusivity to persons with disability for whom specific information availability in NDLI has not been very great earlier. So these are uh, some of the unique uh, features uh, you may have already known. I have talked about uh, most of these. So there are about 15,000 uh, participating institutions who are kind of currently benefiting from uh, NDLI. Over 200,000 hits are available on a daily basis, are, are made on a daily basis. So I'll move on to uh, giving you a glimpse of uh, NDLI disability portal what does it really have to deal with now before i uh, get into the aspects of the portal uh, let me just take you through some basic facts about uh, disability in in india so in india the according to 2011 census which was possibly the first census which very in a, in a structured way collected data on uh, disability. Uh, it has been uh, estimated that out of uh, 121 crore population at that time, 2.68 crore, which is about 2.21% of the total population, has uh, some form of disability. Many have multiple forms as well. So here is uh, the numbers in terms of uh, the uh, division in gender. Here are uh, the, this is a graph which shows the divide between the rural and the urban and naturally, uh, as, as you can expect that on the rural side, the number of people are a lot more. And on the pie chart here, uh, I present the percentage of different forms of disability. As of now in India, 21 different forms of disability are officially recognized. Uh, of that, uh, the top uh, few uh, go into the three classes, which is uh, disability in terms of movement, uh, locomotor disability, locomotor uh, disability, as it is called, disability in terms of hearing, uh, that's the, the deafness or uh, related uh, hard of hearing issues, and disability in relation to vision, which is blindness or low vision. But of course, there are several others. There are multiple disabilities which also cause. So given this, there is a naturally a, a big concern in terms of what are the issues that relate to persons with disability. There are issues of several dimensions of which uh, health, education, employment, accessibility, Discrimination and social exclusion, poor implementation of policies and schemes and so on are some of the really, really, you know, top issues. I mean, health is uh, several of the disabilities are require medical attention. So health system support is critical, which is not uh, up to the requirement. Education uh, for the disabled has uh, mostly been uh, 
not looked at properly for several ages. We will talk about uh, how the new education policy has uh, somewhat uh, started addressing it. Employment is very important for inclusivity of every person with disability in the development process of the nation. But if you ask uh, a large number of persons with disability, the one of the major factors that people talk about is accessibility. Accessibility is an important, very, very important factor which relates to policies, which relates to infrastructure, which relates to, for example, accessibility. I mean, in terms of physical accessibility, you may have started seeing that uh, government now is, is, has been enforcing that uh, there has to be physical accessibility of every public space. There should be ramp, there should be right ways uh, of railings and so on and so forth, even though uh, in most uh, public places, whether it is a railway platform, whether it is a bus terminus, you will see that these are grossly missing. Accessibility is also in terms of uh, electronic access. For example, if I talk about accessibility of uh, websites, that's a very critical issue because Think about a person who has who has blindness or maybe not completely blind, but low vision. Most of the websites are not amenable for access to that person. The person would possibly need to use a screen reader, a computer software which can read out uh, the, the page to the person. Now, if the screen reading is to be done, then certain infrastructural support is needed from the website. For example, every image, image cannot be read out. So every image need to be uh, supplemented with a brief description of the image, which the screen readout software can read out to the person with blindness. Accessibility also includes the way your uh, menu is organized. For example, Oh, we are very comfortable using mouse to go to different buttons and uh, access them, click on the links and so on. A person with uh, blindness or a person with uh, motor neuron uh, disorder would find it very, very difficult to do this navigation. So the navigation must be possible through special means. It should be possible through few simple keystrokes, there must be a natural flow in that website and so on. So accessibility, when you talk about accessibility, there's a big, big uh, issue, both in the physical as well as in the electronic uh, world, digital world. So, and of course, uh, discrimination and social exclusion, which uh, has to deal with our awareness uh, about uh, the disabilities, uh, what they really mean and uh, particularly trying to not to tag persons with the disability he or she has, but uh, to deal the disability as a, as a problem that needs to be addressed, that can be addressed and solved so that the person can have proper education, employment, and contribute to the development of the nation. So, out of all these, uh, I mean, there, there would certainly be a lot more issues you can talk about, but I just took the, you know, very big top level, uh, you know, burning issues, I should say. And I've highlighted the middle four because in some way or other, uh, the disability portal of NDLI would try to pro provide some assistance, some information base to address these issues. So that's the basic objective of this portal is to create a, a knowledge base, uh, a first nationwide. I mean, there are several, several websites as you can think of in any area, you will have that. But like NDLI in principle integrates knowledge sources across uh, the country. NDLI digital uh, disability portal is trying to collate information across the nation, across organizations, even from abroad to help the knowledge, help the education, the employment, the accessibility, awareness, and so on for the disability issues. Uh, let me... So this is how the site is uh, primarily structured. I'll just 
uh, briefly go through that. So there's a homepage which talks about disability. I'll talk about a few basic issues. Then we have different sections based on different aspects of uh, different types of disabilities, like blindness and low vision, hearing impairment, locomotor disability, and so on. Of that, uh, the gray ones are still under development. So I will just talk uh, bits and pieces about the blindness and low vision, which is in the second column. And in this, uh, these are the key points on which we have tried to organize information. Uh, there are resources that are available um, uh, to the uh, to person with blindness or low vision, uh, in, information about employment opportunities, training and vocational opportunities. What does the career uh, caregivers? You know, certainly persons with disability in several ways need caregivers, whether it is their family, their parents, their friends, or uh, a, or their teacher, or their uh, doctor, or nurse, or uh, some paid uh, caregiver. Caregiving is a very critical part of uh, disability management, so to say. So we talk about, uh, provide different information about caregivers, as you can see in the third column. We talk about uh, different institutions uh, that are working on the disability of uh, blindness internationally, nationally, the NGOs, which are playing a very big role in terms of this, will uh, also, uh, also, uh, I, I mean, not also, I mean, they are, they are really playing a critical role. And last but not the least, uh, the rightmost column is probably the most uh, powerful contribution of this particular portal because uh, even though you get uh, some collated information about caregivers or institutions here and there in different websites this is the first time a portal is collating information about varied kinds of technology assistance that are available for the disabled particularly people with uh, blindness or low vision so we talk about various uh, ranges of technologies, starting from dealing with Braille, dealing with uh, written text, dealing with images, which is becoming very, very, uh, which has been ignored for uh, several centuries, I should say, so far as uh, blindness was concerned. Uh, then different aids for the low vision, uh, help for orientation and mobility, help in education, games, leisure, day-to-day -day life, and so on. So given that, I will just quickly uh, take you around some of these and uh, talk about some of the in interesting aspects that. So uh, starting with uh, uh, disability in India, these are the major things that uh, we someone needs to know. The fact of the matter is that after a lot of uh, several years of uh, advocacy, finally, we have a moderately comprehensive act in terms of rights of persons with disability act in 2016. The earlier act uh, in, 2000, uh, in, in 1995, uh, 20 years uh, earlier, were incomplete in multiple different ways. Then we have the establishment of uh, Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities which in 2012, which really supports this uh, initiative significantly. We have our national education policy published uh, last year, and we talk a little bit about how to uh, refer to persons with disability. So if you, talk, if you look at the act, which is uh, the backbone of uh, any uh, governmental support or the public activities, you can see for the first time, a uh, couple of very significant things have been provided. One is, uh, it is uh, the insult or intimidation or humiliation, discrimination of persons with disability in public view has been criminalized. So this is a very, very strong message to the society. The reservation in government jobs have been increased from 3% to 4%. Uh, free education uh, has been proposed in conjunction with NEP to, for the child aged 6 to 18. And the overall coverage of disability categories 
have been broadened to a great extent, uh, expanding from 7 to 21 now. And there are very uh, unique um, conditions of uh, people suffering uh, from have been now recognized as uh, disability in the act, like victims of uh, acid attack, dwarfism, different forms of uh, blood disorders and so on. So we provide a very comprehensive treatment of this act on the portal, talking about the high points and also mentioning about few things that still can be done. The other uh, broad change that uh, came in, there is, a, I think, uh, one second. Uh, Uh, so NEP, which came in 2020, I'm sorry, there's a typo here, copy paste error, has in several sections addressed the issues of the persons with disability. And it has for the first time talked very strongly about equitable and inclusive education. For a large period of time till date, the education to the disabled were thought to be special, only special. So uh, there are special schools for persons with uh, blindness and so on and so forth. Now, so, but over time it was realized that this segregation is causing severe issues with the society and the persons with disability. On one side, when a, a, a child goes to a special school, it's the child starts learning that the child is in that way, so-called, is not normal. Now, a person with disability has got nothing to do with not being normal. I mean, somebody may be short in height, somebody may be fat, somebody may be fair, somebody uh, may be able to run fast and so on. Everything is our diversity in our human race. And we always raise our voice if there is discrimination made on this. But then why discriminate child with uh, disability by sending it to a special school? So uh, NEP has very strongly talked about inclusive education where the ch child with disability will go to the school which where all other children are also attending. There would obviously be special needs and those needs will have to be taken care of. NEP talks at length about uh, these uh, needs and what the government, uh, the educational institutions, the um, NGOs, the citizens need to do in this regard are broadly classified. So uh, it, it does uh, uh, sync with uh, the RPWD Act 2016. It has uh, talked about disability friendly school infrastructure, which is uh, very, very important. And till date, only a few schools exist which are inclusive. Uh, Amar Jyoti School, uh, for example, is one who have been in existence for decades who are inclusive and that they're uh, there's almost uh, equal representation of uh, children with disability and children who do not complain of any specific disability. Uh, then there is a lot of uh, technology interventions that have been suggested in terms of classrooms, in terms of pedagogy, in terms of uh, providing flexible curriculum assessment and certification for the disability education, which is required worldwide for further higher studies and so on educational software, teaching, learning content, and so on. So it goes in a very strong way to create the road forward for all of us to empower the disabled in the, their education and employment. Uh, let me move forward. Uh, so before I, uh, before I uh, get into some of the topics uh, in uh, dealing with disability of blindness. Let me uh, tell you in a, with a very humble tone that uh, over decades, 
the society in general, not only in India, all across the world, has been uh, really struggling to find proper terminology to make reference to persons with disability, which is the currently most widely accepted terminology. So in India, we have uh, used and we still, uh, we have used uh, the term disabled person or vikalang, viklang in Hindi. Uh, till 2016, when uh, we started using another term, the Vyangajan. Uh, I do not want to go into the debate of which term is uh, more proper and which is not, but certainly a lot of terms that have been used uh, intermittently, like being handicapped, crippled, uh, physically challenged, and so on, have been discarded, obviously. It is interesting to note that uh, many of us uh, still feel that it is okay to refer to disability as, or the person with disability as being differently abled. It is very, very interesting uh, for you would be to know that several disability groups, several uh, actual persons with disability denounce this branding because their argument is simple that uh, everyone, whether they have a disability or not, are differently abled. Sachin Tendulkar is differently abled uh, from A.R. Rahman. A.R. Rahman is differently abled from Vishwanathan Anand. So if someone has difficulty with vision, why the person will have to be specifically labeled as differently abled or specially abled? It is really uh, you know, educative to know that most people, person with disability, prefer to accept that uh, there is a disability but in a very positive way, in a very sensitive way. So uh, when we talk about persons, uh, when we talk about disability, here are just some collection uh, I made uh, from uh, 13 different literature and uh, web that what is appropriate to say and what is not appropriate to say. For example, person with disability is what currently is accepted as an appropriate term, whereas handicapped, differently abled, or disabled are not thought to be so. It is not appropriate to uh, call someone blind. It is better to call, be refer as person with visual disability, person with blindness, person with low vision, person with visual impairment, and so on. So uh, that list would go long, but the key theme in this whole thing is, and that's the first uh, education that uh, I, I developed while uh, working with this uh, vertical is that we must use person first language. We must not say blind person. If we say blind person, the emphasis is on the blind. So the the person is getting tagged with the with a tag called blind. But we should refer that to that person as person with blindness. So the person comes first. I'm a I'm a person with uh, uh, you know uh, triple bypass cardiac surgery. Which is truth. But that is the way people would refer to me, not the other way around. So we have to keep this person first aspect in mind. So, with this uh, uh, you know, broad introduction to the aspects of uh, disability in India, the, the law and uh, the approach, let me take some uh, deeper look uh, in terms of the uh, low vision. Uh, blindness and low vision, which is a particularly disturbing form of disability in India. So this is these are the global facts. Uh, globally, there is 1.1 billion uh, people. Uh, <coughs> uh, that is about 14 percent of the population who have some form of vision loss. Now, one point we'll have to make it clear is. Uh, uh, Blindness and low vision are not the same thing. Blindness is uh, has a very strict definition of how low is the vision. You know, it even even a person with blindness may not have a completely dark view. A person may be able to distinguish between light and not light. Going on, there are different forms of uh, levels of. Uh, impairment with the visual ability and that's the different ranges of vision vision loss or uh, low vision that we talk about so there are 
people who are blind, who are moderate to severe vision impairment. And these, these all have very scientific definitions, which we talk about uh, in the portal to educate uh, the common people. And uh, so on. So here's the statistics. And uh, then below in the next point is the, the equivalent numbers in India. You will see um, uh, one point you may note that uh, the numbers that uh, uh, you get when you look at the census data and the numbers that you get when you look at, uh, say, this, this, these uh, statistics are taken from uh, WHO, uh, World Health Organization. Uh, they will not tally because the categorization and definitions are not always the same. So you'll have to keep that in mind. Do not uh, get disturbed that, well, the numbers there are less, the number here is more and so on. But uh, the percentage, as I uh, said, is 19.38%. Uh, is, uh, that's, that's a huge number. But the, if you look at the globality of the aspect of uh, disability of vision in India, then uh, you can see that about 25% of persons with disability are present in India. That is every one of four persons with blindness or low vision is an Indian, which is a very, very unfortunate fact. India happens to be the country with largest number of low vision uh, people. Right. <clears throat> so, here, these are the different aspects we uh, talk about in blindness or low vision, which would be, in general, very educative for everyone. I mean, if you have to understand uh, the uh, people with blindness or low vision, you have to understand blindness and visual impairment to a commoner's level, a layman's level as such. So you need to understand the nature and prevalence of uh, vision loss, particularly what is the situation in India. And uh, you'll be really shocked to know that the largest cause of uh, vision loss uh, in India, in fact, uh, in, across the world, is cataract, which is uh, removable with a very simple surgery and is curable. So this is called preventable vision loss. And a large number of Indians suffer from that. So that tells us, you know, what is the way to go. So uh, there are other factors as to, did we ever think that if someone has a has visual impairment, what does that person see? The person does not see blackness alone. That's, that's being totally blind. But you have often seen blind people uh, achieving a lot of things. Blind people even becoming uh, sharp shooters. There have been Olympic medalists and so on. So people with different impairments see certain things. And it is, it is a very good education to understand what do they see. And, and it's, it's a diff, tough challenge. So we, we, we present a lot of images and data about that. Then uh, talk about deaf blindness, which is another uh, common factor which makes really every, any kind of intervention very, very difficult. Right? So moving uh, forward, let me uh, take you through uh, some of uh, the major sections. The first section, of course, in terms of resources. Resources are very important uh, uh, for a digital library for us. And we talk about a wide range of resources that are available digitally for the blind for the blind and the low vision people. So resources broadly can be categorized into three buckets. One is educational resources, um, which come in form of audio books, braille books, e-books, podcasts, um, audio archives, and large prints. Large print is, is, is another which is very, very popular with low vision. If you have less visual acuity, then uh, you may not be able to read a normal text, a normal font size, but you'll be able to read if the font size is made bigger. So this is physically done as well as this is digitally provided. So in terms of these educational resources, we have listed nearly 50 plus sources where different of various forms of these uh, contents are either freely available or freely available to person with uh, uh, blindness and low vision or are available at a very, very subsidized uh, price. So this will be a great resource for people to refer to 
to know where they can get their educational material. The other is will deals with uh, information and other sources. It's uh, getting educational material, your textbooks and uh, you know related information is not enough. You need to naturally have access to other forms of information. There are several Braille libraries in India. We have uh, talked about those. There are excellent videos available in YouTube talking about not only different educational aspects, but different issues, different support systems, different support groups, different technologies, different options, and so on. So we have uh, listed at least uh, 20 YouTube channels, which are leaders in terms of providing information on blindness and low vision. There are excellent TEDx talks that have been given by different people on uh, various aspects. Very interestingly, uh, recently, uh, magazines have been started for the blind and the low vision. So these are Braille and audio magazines. Only. There are quite a few of them. And then research resources. This has been I mean, lack of uh, data on uh, blindness research or in general disability research has been always a concern for development. Of that, uh, there are a lot of uh, effort is going into building up proper data sets, you know, that uh, we have now overall an emphasis of data science to uh, solve uh, difficult problems. So here we are trying to bring in uh, the data sets that are available on, uh, on vision loss across the world and specifically in India. So this is, we believe would be a very, very important uh, resource for persons with blindness, and low vision and all persons, all caregivers that, that are associated with them. This is a glimpse of uh, Vision Atlas, which has been uh, launched in the last couple of years, which uh, has, uh, a, a, we, this is an interactive portal and uh, it can be, the data here can be used uh, freely and it gives you multiple views in terms of countries, in terms of uh, types of vision loss in terms of types of remedies and so on and so forth. And in keeping with this, um, uh, very recently, uh, India, in uh, with support from NATMO, our mapping organization, has launched India's Vision Atlas, which goes uh, deeper into Indian specifications. For example, the particular map uh, I'm showing you here uh, does highlight the districts in India, which has very, very high uh, percentage of people with visual impairment. So these are great resources to be used in research and education. This is just a sample of a magazine. Uh, this lady, Upasana Makati, first started uh, White Print, which is a magazine, Braille magazine for the visually impaired. It's a great uh, uh, initiative. She actually left a regular uh, career and dedicated her life for this magazine and promotion of uh, Braille literature easily in India. Moving on, uh, employment is obviously in, is a priority for every citizen. Uh, and we have a kind of uh, you know mindset I'm not certainly meaning everybody, but many of us do that. Well, if somebody is uh, is uh, disabled with blindness or has significantly low vision, then that person is not fit for employment, which is a very, very wrong thing to think of. So there are several employment options uh, here in this uh, chart uh, and, and the details are there on the site. Uh, we have tried to collate information on career options. These are different sectors, as you can see, of the economy. These are, these are sectors in which uh, there are career options for people with uh, blindness or uh, low vision. And this is just not a theoretical study. We have collated this uh, sectoral information based on placement uh, information and uh, job ads that are available in multiple job sites. Uh, there are some, uh, you know, avenues, uh, well, well, you can see that many, many of these are, are very, very, uh, you know, are well known also like BPO 
as we know that they have been engaging a large number of uh, persons with uh, blindness. Physiotherapy has been another area where a lot of uh, uh, people with blindness uh, have been working. IT of late has been using quite a lot. But there are uh, very interesting uh, you know, sectors like food and smell tester. Uh, there's a college, uh, interestingly known as the College of Fragrance for the Visually Impaired, who give training to the visually impaired people on how to smell and how to distinguish uh, different smell and how to tell about quality based on smell. So they are getting uh, good opportunities in terms of uh, quality uh, assurance uh, responsibilities in fragrance industry and others. So there are uh, information videos on this, which particularly is fascinating. Now, obviously the question is, uh, if the person with blindness have to look for uh, jobs, the job ads must be accessible. This is where my reference to web accessibility comes to a big question because even uh, unfortunately, most of the job portals uh, are not uh, accessible for the visually impaired. So that needs to be worked on, but uh, there are several standard ways of going about in terms of looking for uh, uh, looking for job options, uh, job awareness, and uh, of course, taking help from the caregivers. There's a very interesting uh, lecture series uh, created by XRCVC, the San Xavier's uh, uh, own uh, center for vision center, where experts in I mean, domain experts talk about the opportunities of uh, the visual impaired in these sectors of employment, whether it is journalism, whether it's finance, whether it's law, whether it's tourism, whether it's business and entrepreneurship and so on. The very, very uh, rich uh, videos with information and directions in career counseling, which certainly the people with uh, uh, blindness and low vision can make good use of. And uh, here is a glimpse of, I mean, the actual list is much longer. Here's a glimpse of different organizations who offer, uh, who offer proper job ads or actually offer placements, placement services or placements to people with uh, blindness. So there's a rich uh, collection of information in terms of employment uh, for the blind. And uh, the next section uh, talks about training and vocational. I'll just uh, skim through very quickly because there are several uh, options in terms of uh, training, in terms of vocational, particularly important uh, for people who, are, uh, who have not uh, studied beyond, say, uh, primary education or uh, middle education. Uh, they can get into different vocational training and uh, make livelihood as a as an employee or as a self-employed person. Uh, one, one interesting uh, training is in digital accessibility. This is gaining a lot of momentum these days because as I said, that digital accessibility, web accessibility is a concern area. And uh, nobody really is uh, fully aware of uh, the requirements or the, I should say, the completeness of accessibility. So. Uh, being not being a sightless person, someone cannot really assess the accessibility of a website for the sightless. So there is a lot of opportunity that uh, exists for the sightless in uh, getting trained on uh, what is digital accessibility, how to test it, how to train the, how to audit uh, websites for accessibility, how to help the web designers in providing accessibility and so on. So there are, it is not only that uh, there are the regular jobs, uh, which uh, the, the person with blindness can take up with the uh, assistance of technology, but there are new job opportunities also coming up, which uh, provide a lot of, uh, a lot of hope to everyone. So these are glimpses of some organizations giving training, more are there in the website. Talking about caregivers, these are the, they are the critical people in the in the life cycle of uh, a person with uh, disability in general. So there are several uh, factors about 
uh, them. There are caregivers. Uh, they have their roles. They have specific, uh, you know, they have to be trained in a specific way. There are different, uh, the teachers on the rightmost column, if you see, the teachers for the visually impaired need to know about the pedagogy, how to increase the braille literacy, how to use tactile graphics, uh, how to do classrooms and so on. There are different diploma degree and master's degree programs in, uh, uh, in terms of TVI that are available uh, in India. They are certified by uh, RCI, Rehabilitation Council of India and so on. There is a lot about uh, awareness and advocacy that needs to be uh, need that the people need to be aware of. So variety of this information around caregiving are collated here, including support service availability, support uh, groups availability, and so on. So I'll not go through the details. I'm running out of time. So there are some uh, tips for caregivers, which I lifted from a part of the site, which shows a basic workflow of, uh, as a caregiver, what care you should take about the, the person whom you are caregiving and about yourself. Uh, there are uh, different guidelines and uh, policies at a government level, at an inst international level. Uh, there are uh, awareness uh, and advocacy that are strongly required. So um, uh, we talk about why awareness and advocacy are important and what are the forms of awareness, what are the forms of advocacy that currently exist. So there are several uh, symbolisms, observances, there are organizations and projects, and there are very, very interesting projects that uh, people do. Uh, like World Side Day photo competition. It's a photo competition uh, by the low vision people. Uh, the voice of the eye. There are different uh, ways that, uh, you make. Sir, your audio is not coming, sir. Sorry to interrupt. No, sir. No, we can't hear you, sir. Yes, I think now it's coming. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear you now. Please go ahead. Sorry. sorry. How much time do I have, uh, Vignesh Ji? Now it's 12.30, sir. Maybe another 5-10 minutes. I'll, I'll wrap within that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was uh, not, uh, I didn't understand that I was not audible. So uh, there are, uh, there is a key issue of understanding the blindness. So one way people have, uh, you know, innovated is uh, the best way to do that is to experience the world blindfolded. And there are several forms in which uh, this is being done in India and across the world. Uh, for example, uh, blind walk, you just blindfold yourself and try to walk. Of course, this has to be done in an organized manner because if, we, if I blindfold, I don't know you how to use cane and you know, I'll just fall and hurt myself, but in a guided way. Walking in the dark, walk in the dark museum. There are museums created which are completely dark where you do not, cannot see anything. You have to feel everything. So that gives you a kind of realization of the world of uh, for people with uh, low vision. Then there is a um, uh, dialogue in the dark, dining in the dark, and so on and so forth. So very, very amazing things happening. And it's very, uh, in, in line with this, it's very interesting to see that uh, Bollywood, our favorite movie industry, has been quite... Uh, active, at least, uh, I should say, in the last uh, 10, 15 years, in terms of taking up the cause uh, of the disabled uh, people. And, and we have seen several movies, uh, whether it is Black or it is uh, Tare Zameen Par and so on and so forth coming in. And we had a very famous uh, show on uh, TV called Sattama Vajayate by Amir Khan. So these are different uh, aspects of uh, awareness and all these information, uh, these uh, links, uh, these uh, videos are collated 
in this part of the portal, a rich uh, collection for anyone to really go through. Uh, let me, similarly, there's a lot of advocacy that is going on. And besides uh, awareness, you need advocacy to really put your point. I mean, the, 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 the reason the PWD Act of 1995 could change to RPWD Act of 2016 is because of severe advocacy by different groups. Advocacy was critical in uh, making an amendment in the Copyright uh, Act, uh, which brought in Copyright Act 2012, where specific provisions were provided for the people with blindness so that the Braille contents can be easily made on copyrighted books without actually copyright panels. So these are the different aspects. Uh, this I found really, really interesting as, in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, it's really inspiring this in terms of awareness. Uh, in uh, last year, this flag was created. This is a flag without colors. This is India's uh, flag, of course. But uh, it does not have colors because that's not what uh, the people with uh, without vision can make appreciate. So in rather, it has everything written in Braille where it, the top line, it says that, uh, well, what is uh, this color is supposed to be and what does it mean? In middle, it talks about why it, it talks about the Asok Chakra and all that. And this uh, has been uh, used in several schools on the Independence Day, Republic Day and so on. Really, this trend is going to. So so kind of, you know, um, when we see the tricolor, we have a feeling, right? All of us, I mean, uh, I, I, I said that I have goosebumps when I hear the national anthem and, and see the 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 national flag. So we have to give that feeling to the person who does not have a uh, vision. And these are attempts towards that. These are deeper ways of making uh, awareness across uh, communities. There's a glimpse of the blind work. Uh, uh, then there are, I'll, I'll skip this support groups, support services, uh, vision centers. There are uh, Braille production centers. All this information you'll find in the portal. Then details about what does it take to become a teacher for the visually impaired? What are the rules of that? What are the pedagogy that are available today? How to increase braille literacy and so on. Uh, we have a lot of information given on institutions, uh, uh, international, national NGOs. I'm just flipping through these slides. You can later on uh, go through them with a little bit of time. Uh, but because I want to just end with uh, assistive technology, talking about assistive technology, which is uh, which has become really a turnaround for the uh, for the person with disability. And here we talk about we are talking about assistive assistive technology or AT as it is called for the visually impaired. So there are different sections where you talk about reading and writing brain, which has been the kind of the mother tongue for a large number of people without uh, vision. But the fact of the matter is still in, in uh, India and across the world, only a very small percentage of persons uh, not having vision or having a vision loss uh, can read and write Braille. The reason is it is not easy. It is not easy to get Braille books. They are heavy. They are expensive. It is not easy to write Braille. You need uh, special pads. But technology has come to a solution. Now you have electronic braille readers. Now you have mobile phone um, uh, apps available, which can uh, help you in terms of braille reading, which can help you in terms of writing in braille and so on. The similar thing exists in terms of uh, reading and writing of text. There are screen readers. Uh, there are large prints. These are all different technologies and apps which are helping you in terms of uh, uh, helping the person with uh, blindness uh, in terms of reading a normal text. The problem comes with images. You know, how do you teach geometry to a person, to a kid uh, with very low vision? Or how do you uh, teach geography, maps to that person? The only way is to go tactile. That is, uh, have raised lines describe those um, images that we see. You know, so kind of. Every information, we have seen relief map in geography ourselves. But in terms of uh, teaching uh, maps of all kinds, in terms of teaching 
geometry in terms of teaching art uh, music everything the tactile is taking a very very major role and it's a revolution in uh, 3d printing technology which makes the tactile creation very easy and cost effective and the use of tactile graphics becomes really really important there are several other aspects uh, i will uh, for the sake of time i'll skip those this is just a genealogy of braille if you wondered that uh, you know what happened uh, to you know this tactile writing after braille which was 200 years uh, back and thought that uh, braille is the only thing that is available you'll get amazed as to what are the different options people have worked with and uh, it is very encouraging to know that uh, there's a completely new system being worked on uh, called alia frames which is uh, which is a combined uh, system which is uh, easy to learn braille if it takes uh, three months uh, ilia takes about uh, two to three hours to learn and it can be learned by the person with sight and without sight and a lot of technology are being developed on that very recently last year uh, there was a braille noia created in japan for the tokyo olympics with the signages in tokyo olympics will be done in that where the the, the braille codes will be embedded on top of the normal letters a uh, very very interesting idea and uh, that is being tried out so a lot are happening in terms of the technology this is reading writing text i i just want to this is my fascinating topic so i just want to spend the last minute here and close uh, this is what you see is uh, obviously all of us know mona lisa and uh, what may amaze you is the fact that somebody is touching mm, the the image touching the picture with hands which is a sure no no in any museum any gallery anywhere right you are you are not supposed to but here this image is different this is not here the color is there for us to see but for uh, the people with uh, no or low vision it is actually a tactile um, uh, image it has different raisings different textures and the person with his hands are trying to feel them to understand what that image is and slowly a texture based uh, tactile language is emerging to understand images and there's a great uh, deal of uh, you know uh, tactile graphics that is going as aids and devices a uh, lot uh, are being done in terms of uh, in, in india particularly iit delhi uh there's a they have spawned two startups who are producing different tactile uh, study material visualization of the art as i said there's a lot of touch art like uh, you know braille graffiti and uh, accessible museum things are being done all across uh, in india so there's a lot of interesting uh, such uh, you know uh, technology aspects covered here this is these are in terms of uh, low vision some in terms of orientation and mobility i'll skip those and uh, i think uh, i will just end with uh, this the technology in day to day life where i've just picked up uh, a few uh, obviously finally um, any every person with blindness need to have an independent life so assistive technology for uh, adl that is uh, assisted daily living is very important so there are different kinds of gadgets that have been uh, thought of that are being built in the low cost as well which can help a person with uh, vision loss uh, lead life in a normal manner for example liquid level sensor it's very difficult to pour uh, a liquid from one uh, say from the jug to the glass if you cannot see okay so there are there are you know smart glasses Uh, drinking glasses being made and so on uh, growing up is always a difficult process and uh, it uh, naturally is difficult for every kid and more so for the persons who have vision loss so just think of it a a, a uh, child who does not have vision has not seen his or her body does not know what what is where so this is a tactile uh, education kit which uh, gives these these drawings are actually raised lines drawings which uh, the the person can feel and understand on the body where different organs are and what are their role in terms of uh, the 
uh, the sexuality that uh, the kid is going into are there. Uh, Android and apps and all that, I'll, I'll, I will skip the rest. Uh, finally, naturally, we sign off by noting that in spite of all these ads, there are several achievers and they, are, they will go on uh, making us proud. They have uh, worked against uh, all odds. They have worked against uh, all, uh, you know, impairment. Uh, and uh, so we talk about some of those greats. So with this note, uh, I will uh, close here. I'm grossly crossed time, I know. Uh, and uh, if there are quick questions, I'll be happy to take. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, in fact, uh, I learned a lot of new uh, uh, terminology and a lot of new aspects to uh, the rights of uh, various uh, disabled uh, persons. So thanks to your detailed presentation. So we already have two questions uh, lined up. One is uh, uh, question is from Ms. Saita. Uh, her question is how to tackle a disabled child who is uh, stubborn and also having uh, hearing issues. Uh, Madam, uh, I, I think uh, you are asking a wrong person. I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a information uh, collation expert. I'm not an expert of that field. So for this, I can, I can send, send you certain pointers to whom you can uh, ask uh, on this. Uh, the caregivers in this, there are support groups which support in this, but I cannot, uh, I would not dare to, um, even though I may have developed some ideas by reading this uh, uh, literature, I would not dare answer this question because I'm, I'm not at all an expert of this area. I, I, I hope you, you understand my situation. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a information scientist collating the relevant information together and organizing them for easy use. Sure, sir. The next question is from Ms. Uh, Minakshi uh, Josi. And her question is, though government has done uh, uh, so much initiatives for persons with disability, but a huge amount of uh, children with disability are not getting jobs, even after uh, putting in a lot of hard work. So uh, this actually creates a lot of uh, uh, inferiority complex or uh, having uh, losing faith in their own self. So what are your views uh, in order to get them uh, jobs which they deserve? Obviously, uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a really, really difficult uh, problem. And, uh, but the ray of hope is, why did, uh, I mean, the, the basic question is, are they not getting job because there are not enough jobs, which is a general scenario in many areas. The other side is, are they getting discriminated? If they're getting discriminated, then it has to be acted upon because certainly that is. But overall, I would say that uh, the attitude towards employing the, the person with disability has significantly changed. I mean, uh, if you go to the site uh, on employment, uh, part of the site on employment, you'll find references where there has been a detailed survey where uh, they have compared, they have talked to several uh, companies and where the companies have said that they prefer to keep people with certain kinds of uh, disability because they are more loyal, they have a better attitude, keeping them gives a better customer confidence and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of positive reasons to, to employment. Of course, the government efforts uh, will never be able to satisfy employment, whether it is for the disabled or otherwise. There will have to be better, uh, you know, awareness and initiative from all of us. From and um, we do want to provide more and more live information on employment opportunities when we can, uh, you know, complete this site. Uh, that was one of the visions I had. That uh, can I try to get uh, more live information on? employment opportunities, job opportunities, and uh, take it to the to the required persons. We will try to help on that. And if any way you are, any of you are willing to help, we'll be most welcome. Sure. So there is a, just a follow-up question to the, just now uh, your remarks. Whom to contact if you want to help for development of e-resources for visual impairments within India Life? This question is from Ms. Sapna. Um, uh, for for right now, in NDLI, it is me, because the site has not yet got launched. Uh, certainly, 
uh, in a couple of weeks when it gets launched, uh, I will share it with Dr. Vignesh, who will share to all participants on that. That's the reason I have talked about so much on the site, but I could not uh, really give you the link. And uh, then you will be able to see what are the different uh, e-resources available. You can just write to me. I can uh, send you the, the, the collated list is obviously some collated list is with us. So if you send me a mail, I will try to send you that list. You can check out those e-resources. Sure, sir. Uh, sir, this question is from my end. So this question is like, especially for uh, this uh, Braille books, which are uh, digitized in various uh, libraries and also uh, as per the copyright uh, laws, uh, we, uh, we it says like for if we scan a copyrighted book, especially for uh, people with person with uh, visual disability, it's allowed. So, what are your views on that, sir? Is it actually being implemented, or is there any uh, legal hurdle that is still being faced? No, no legal hurdles. I mean, actually, actually, you know, you have already heard the relevant person, Professor Ganguly. If, if uh, I mean, I, I must mention that he was one of the key persons who advocated and made this change possible. He worked with uh, Sanjeevier's uh, Vision Center to make this change in the Copyright uh, Act. Now, the basic uh, issue is this uh, provision in the Copyright Act is to be used only with persons with disability. So anyone who wants to use that kind of a digital book needs to have the disability card. UDID card. And so every source that provides this, where content has been created under this clause of the, of the Copyright Act, will need that you apply with that UDID card. With the UDID card, it will become available. Uh, so that is the current situation. There is no legal hurdle uh, as such. I mean, that, that I could find. I have read about uh, 50 sites on, on e resources by now. But nowhere people have talked about uh, legal uh, issues. People have talked about the availability issues. Not enough is getting digitized or being made into Braille because everything needs money, effort, and all that. Sure, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, excellent presentation and responding to all the questions from the participants. Uh, now I request Balakopalji to uh, formally propose and, the word. And, and, and Dr. Vignesh, I will, I will share this presentation with you. And sure. uh, if we are sharing it with uh, the audience, you are free to do that. Sure. So I will put it on the website itself where the webinar is uh, created, sir. And then we can share it with them. Palakubal, sir, kindly unmute your mic, sir. You just press the space bar. It will be working. Okay. Yes. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, that was a very uh, amazing presentation. And uh, was so technical. You have touched all aspects of this uh, much needed uh, work uh, because of the disability community. Uh, you, are, you are doing a great work and you will be uh, supported by the God also because you are uh, taking this um, education sector to the, uh, this, uh, what you call this disabled sector also very, very good. And your effort will have a, a very good result in the future, and everybody will be appreciating you. And this uh, uh, so is a very terrific job. You have touched uh, these aspects in a very deeply, and my congratulations and my salute, big salute to you, sir. Uh, thank you for coming here and spending more than 45 to 50 minutes with us and making this, uh, this uh, series of webinars a success. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Balagopalji. Thank you for the opportunity to me and to India Life. I we really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. So, participants, I just have a couple of housekeeping announcements. I have just shared the feedback. So, Dr. Vignesh, I can sign off now? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Balagopalji. See you So, participants, I have just shared the feedback form URL in the chat box. So, kindly submit your feedback form and uh, get your uh, certificate of participation and also uh, in the evening we have an another session on um, national educational policy 2020 and uh, you can uh, register for that uh, as well so i have shared the registration url also and uh, kindly install the ndla mobile app to access over 7.3 crore knowledge resources and also for uh, 
the benefit of a lot of uh, uh, higher educational uh, institutions and school education uh, teachers and faculty members uh, there is this skills for workshop work uh, scholarship being offered by uh, kedas so you can apply for the scholarship for the second batch so currently we are accepting uh, the application form uh, so for uh, people watching in the youtube i'm just going to put it in the chat box and comment box kindly wait for few minutes uh, before i put it there so with this i thank each one of you for participating uh, i will check if there is any uh, 